Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lane Tech Stadium as we begin our coverage of the All-American Game of the Women's Football Alliance. Mike Peden here with Andrew Oninson, and we are underway. The American and National Conferences. The American will get the first possession. They're wearing the red. You're seeing number 19 on the field and a fumble to start this game. Andrew, you had a chance to review this matchup between our sets of All-Stars. Who should we keep an eye on among our All-Star participants today? Well, I'm looking at a lot at uh, quarterback for the American team, Sowers. Uh, she played for the Kansas City Titans. She's got a very good arm. She's going to start the game off. Um, she's going to be their starter. She led the league in completion percentage. Um, she's, she's got all the stats to go with it. She has a very good fluid motion, very good throwing motion. You can tell maybe she used to be a pitcher back in her day. Um, but she's got the quarterback position pretty sewn up really good. First down and 10, Katie Sowers, as you mentioned, led the league in passer rating. In motion is number 81, and we're gonna get names and numbers as we move along. It's a low snap, so she's gonna have to run it herself, and she gets to the 31-yard line, a loss of two. We play with college rules in the Women's Football Alliance, so only one foot is needed to get a catch in bounds. Clock stops to move the chains on every first down, and no two-minute warning. Looks like they started off running the spread Second and 12, there's Sowers and Taylor Hay in the backfield, number 12 also from the Kansas City Titans. The Titans, one of the premier programs in this league. Sowers gets the snap and rolls right. And it appears she will take this herself as she tries to turn the corner and picks up about three yards before she's tackled, making the play with number 29, Darcy, Darcy Leslie of the Chicago Force, and we have a late flag. I think that was a late hit on the quarterback. It looked pretty late. We'll check the marker. We want to thank our friends at Perfect Storm Broadcasting for streaming this game live. And if you want to communicate with us throughout the game, you can click the email link on the PSB screen. And if you want to send in your shout outs on Twitter, and that is a late hit, so a first down by virtue of the penalty, you can hit me up at the Sports Brain. The, the word sports and the word brain is in the biological organ the Sports Brain, all one word, no underscores, no spaces, and we will gladly read your tweets on the air, keep them family friendly. First down and 10. It's a handoff to number 12, Taylor Hay, and Hay will run for a gain of about three yards. Taylor Hay, the leading rusher this season, 
in the WFA. The only player to crack 1,000 yards, 1,086 in the regular season, 12.6 yards per carry and 12 touchdowns. She's built like it too. She's got tree trunks for legs. Three yard gain on the play, second and seven with the ball at midfield. Shotgun, three-step drop, Hay throws, passes complete for a first down, making the reception number 81. Gina Holcomb from the Houston Power. Looks like the national defense are lining up in a 3-4. They're led by linebacker uh, Angela Beast Ember from Derby City Dynamite. And some of the teams offered their nicknames in the program information, so a little more flair to this game. First down and 10, another first down conversion for the American Conference. This is an all-star game. There's the spread again, single back. Sowers in trouble. Breaks through the first line and will run to the 35. Gains six yards on the play. She's showing off her legs. She's got great athleticism. Katie Sowers on the season. 19 touchdowns, two interceptions, 1,148 yards, one of five quarterbacks to break 1,000 yards passing. What a completion percentage, 67.6. .6. She also ran for nearly 600 yards and four, and four rushing touchdowns. And that was enough to make the top 20 in the regular season. And a lot of quarterbacks can scramble. This time the National League picks up on it and making the tackle for the national team, number 32. Name we don't quite have, on, name we don't have on the roster. So that will be unnamed. That makes second and three, a third and seven. Three yard loss in the play. Sowers and Hay continuing to line the backfield. Four receivers. Sowers, a low snap, but she handles it. Wants to pass to her right, she does. And the pass is overthrown. The intended receiver, number nine. Uh, Lisa King of the Central Cal War Angels was the intended receiver. She is the co-owner of the Women's Football Alliance. So you have to be on your best behavior, Andrew, because our boss, effectively, is competing in this game. And you don't want to get no late penalties on her. She might slap you with more than a fine. <laughs> I don't think it's penalties she's concerned about. It's my job that I'm concerned about. Fourth down and seven, and the American Conference going to go for it here. There's not a strong kicking game in the Women's Football Alliance. Press coverage to the right is kind of, I don't know about a fourth down press. Here comes the blitz, Sowers in trouble, breaks through, two tackles, rolls right. She has to scramble though, and she's gonna run out of bounds, but short of the first down, the National Conference will take over on downs. So we're gonna get our first look at the national team offense. And once again, you can send us your feedback if you're watching this online. Just click the email link at the bottom of the PSB screen. And don't forget my Twitter handle, The Sports Brain. And we will happily read your tweets live on the air. The Sports Brain. First down and 10 for the National Conference. And their quarterback, number 15, Sammy Grisafi from the host Chicago Force. This is their stadium. And the first down play is deflected but caught. Down the left sideline and a first down for the national team making the catch off the deflection. Number one, Sabrina Kelly from the Tampa Bay Inferno. Really good concentration by uh, Kelly, it's a good catch. First down and 10 from the 49 yard line. That was a 15 yard gain roughly. And we'll get names and numbers down as we move along through this broadcast. Fresh set of downs at the 49. Handoff play this time. 
Getting through the first wave, but not through the second, is number 22, Kiva Thomas from the Indy Crash, last night's winners of the Alliance Bowl. Two yard gain on the play, second and eight. We had the Alliance Bowl last night, effectively a consolation game between Seattle and Indianapolis. Indianapolis coming out victorious. Later this afternoon, the San Diego Surge and Boston Militia will meet a rematch of three years ago when Boston came out victorious. San Diego won the championship the following year. So a strong narrative with our two championship combatants. Second and eight for the national team. They're wearing the blue jerseys. American wearing the red. Fake handoff and a screen to number 83. That's gonna be good for a first down and a couple yards more. 39 yard line, a nine yard gain, or 10 yard gain. And making the reception, Jeanette Gray of the Chicago Force. What a play call. They must have noticed that the D line is just coming straight at the quarterback, not even looking for you know, any reads or nothing, and they just dumped it off for a screen. That was a very, very nice play call, right play call at the right time. And as you may have picked up, this game is similar to the Pro Bowl in the NFL. An all-star game, but the championship participants are not competing in this one. It'd be tough to play two games in one day. It's tough to play one game in one day. Fresh set of downs for the national team from the 39-yard line. Empty backfield. Five receivers. And timeout, some confusion about the play execution. A lot of players were in motion. So the national team will burn one of their three timeouts. Your impression so far, Andrew? Uh, well, uh, I, I like what the, the defense of the national did to contain um, Sowers. It looked like they were gonna march down the field and get some kind of points, so. Uh, you got to consider that a victory on the first possession. And Jeanette Gray, we should point out, the player who made the last catch for the national team, led the league in receiving yards for the regular season. 602 yards, 14.3 yards per catch, eight touchdowns through the air. She also had six rushing touchdowns, so she was all over the field for the Chicago. And Grisafi was fifth in the league in passer rating at 113.9. Eight touchdowns, two interceptions, 909 yards, passing 65.3 completion percentage. We'll try first down again. More confusion, now a player in motion. The fake pass, and with the carry is number 22. Doesn't gain much, maybe a yard. And I want to say that's Kiva Thomas. There are multiple numbers worn by the players. Watch out for that wind gust, Andrew. Blowing my notes all over. We have our first tweet, which we'll get to after the next play. One yard gain, second and nine. Grisafi to Gray on the screen. And Gray, with a fine yards after catch, gains about 10 and another first down for the National Conference, but we have a player down for the American Conference. So we'll have an injury timeout. When we come back, it's first down. The first tweet comes from Miss Kia, says, let's go West Coast Lightning, number 82, Martha Rodriguez, on the American team. And if you wish to send an email to us, you can do so. Click the Perfect Storm, or per click the link on the Perfect Storm broadcasting screen. Martha Rodriguez, the player who got the shout out, third in the league, actually tied for the league lead in sacks this season. She got 11 of those, tied with Victoria Secor and Angie Embry Jr. Well, she was very disruptive, 20 tackles for loss. Very big player for them. 
season might not have turned out the way they wanted, but from an individual standpoint, she had a very good season. And that's why she made this all-star game. Well, thank you, Miss Kia, for bringing Martha Rodriguez to our attention. The player who's down gets back up, and as always, cramping and other injuries are a concern. Temperatures are a little cooler than average for this time of year. The player who was down was number 91, Brandy Rogers from the Las Vegas Showgirls. Las Vegas was the host of the championship and all-star games, all-American game, I should say, four years ago. And the championship was won by the Lone Star Mustangs. Back to action, first and 10. It's a handoff to number 25. Tries to cut back and making the tackle for a loss, number 82. That's Martha Rodriguez. She blew up that play. That was a very good read by her. Totally dominating the line of scrimmage. Making the carry. Well, number 25, not on the roster. So a little foreboding of sorts on Twitter. Loss of three yards on the play. As you said, Rodriguez, 20 tackles for loss. What a great asset to have for the West Coast Lightning. Player in motion. They'll try a handoff again. Rodriguez can't make the tackle this time, but there for another loss is number 13. Ree Graves making the carry was Sabrina Kelly. Rodriguez is making her presence known. I mean, she's reading the play very well. Um, you, can't get, you can't ask for much more out of uh, what she a D and or a stand-up linebacker. She's not down any at any play. She's standing up, but she's more of like a, a rush uh, lineman. Antoinette Garza sending us an email saying she would like to shout out to all of the Lady War Angels playing on the American team. We are getting our emails forwarded to us. It's great to have free Wi-Fi available. I think I might stick around Chicago for a while. Yeah, you can't be free anywhere. <laughs> Third and 16 at following the three yard loss. Some great open field tackling by the American Conference here. Deep pass. Almost intercepted, and that's going to bring up fourth down. And number 34 frustrated. That was Jay Westbrooks of the Everett Rain, and she knew she had a sure pick dropped. Yeah, she did everything right there except hold on to the ball. Well, and that happens even in the pros. How many times have we seen dropped interceptions and dropped passes in the NFL? We couldn't ask for a better day to, to have a football game, uh, to be honest. Ask me personally. No rain yet. It's, it is the Windy City, so. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day to be a neighbor. <laughs> fourth and 16. They will go for it, the national team. Single back, four receivers. Grisafi dropping back. Short slant, caught but a long way to go and turning it over on downs, making the reception for the national team, number 22, Kiva Thomas. So the American coming up big after giving up a few first downs and credit the defensive line for two big tackles. And that was a really good tackle. That was a swarm game tackle on that last play. You could see about four or five uh, of the American just swarm to the ball and they weren't gonna give up that first down. They wanted their offense to get the ball back. And to accentuate on this day, temperatures expected to hit the mid to upper 70s. Chance of rain is light. A dream scenario for football, unless you like hot and humid weather. Won't get quite that sticky today, but that's fine. Let's take a look at the American Conference again. Katie Sowers. Got some early momentum, but couldn't hang on to it and turned it over on the opposite side of the field and what a stuff by the national team. 32 was there and trying to get the other number. 29, Darcy Leslie was credited with the tackle. Four yard loss on the play. Darcy Leslie 
coming from the Chicago Force. The Chicago Force in what seems like full force today. They're very well represented in the hometown host. They reached the semifinals but fell short. Sowers with another low snap. Now she has to scramble to her left and she will be sacked by Darcy Leslie. Defense coming up big in this All-American game so far. That was unexpected. I thought it was going to be an offensive uh, sling fest, but the defenses are showing out. They're showing, you know, why why they uh, why defense wins championships. Another message from Linda Coleman going, giving a shout out to Denisa Denisha Montgomery from the Tennessee Train. She wears number 24 in this game, so we've had a lot of uh, national team support recently. Seven yard loss on the sack by Leslie. She has made two consecutive tackles for loss, and third and 21 is what the American Conference faces. Player in motion, that's Holcomb, and we have flags on the field. The play may have been executed too late. No, it's a false start, but that doesn't help the American cause. Now it's third and 26. And as you know, Andrew, not a lot of plays, even for an all-star game, that are drawn up for third and 26. Nope, not a lot. Maybe you can catch them off guard with a screen, pick up some yards, you know, to get in better punting position, uh, if they're gonna punt, you know, it, it is an all-star game. But. Sowers going deep, incomplete. Just off the hands. That was a great throw in the tight coverage. Lisa King, the intended receiver. Fourth and 26, and I imagine we're going to see the punting unit come out, and we do indeed. Joy Berry of the Austin Outlaws will get her first action, and this will be our first special teams play of this All-American game with 2.07 left on the clock. Is that another ball start? No, uh, timeout for the American Conference. <laughs> Looks like both defenses are imposing their will early on. You gotta love that. Timeout, American. Well, they forced each other to burn up one of their timeouts in the first quarter. Lane Tech Stadium is the location for this fine event. Lane Tech Stadium, home of Lane Technical School, a college preparatory program, and one of our broadcast crew members is an alum of this school, a graduate, Crystal Field. She's working the camera on the 20 yard line on the left side, so a bit of a homecoming for her, and for most of us, it's our first visit to the north end of Chicago. Yeah, I talked to her pregame. She's very uh, happy to come back. She said just looks just like when she was here, so. Punt is away. It's deep. Returnable. With it is number seven, Marcelina Chavez of the Tampa Bay Inferno, and she will return it to the 38-yard line. And Miss Kia has some more shout outs to offer. Number 69, Stanislawski on the American team. That's Christina Stanislawski. She's on the offensive line. Number 78, Alvarado. Name we don't have on the roster. Must have been a late addition. And number 89, Nicole Estrada, the linebacker. So the Tampa Bay Lightning, or the West Coast Lightning. Tampa Bay, what am I thinking? This is an NHL. <laughs> One minute, 53 seconds remaining. And do we have another timeout? Looks like there could have been a flag, but not thrown. I don't know. Well, while we wait for the ruling, Jamal Jones wants to send a shout out all the way from Germany to Taylor Hay and the Kansas City Titans that are representing the organization here. No penalty 
think there was some confusion over where the ball should have been spotted, but we get that sorted out. Play continues. It will be first and 10 from the 38-yard line for the National Conference. We've been appreciating your emails and tweets so far, getting a lot of support. I know we had a strong viewership last night. Ball is snapped to number 29. She finds a hole, breaks through the, to the secondary, a 12-yard gain, and making the play. Not quite sure. We, we also have a new quarterback in now. Uh, looks like... Is that the Cleveland Fusion? It is, number six. Beth. Beth Andrazic of the Cleveland Fusion. Indeed, she is wearing it. One thing that helps is she hands the ball off for a seven-yard gain, a strong running game right now. That was Candy Thompson of the Tampa Bay Inferno making the carry. This is an all-star game, so you're going to see a lot of players take snaps. It's very much like the Pro Bowl, where players will come on for a quarter. Yeah, two straight runs where the running backs are trucking down the the field I, you, looks like they're going to try to impose their will on the defensive line and get up to the linebackers and to the second level one thing that helps us they wear the same jersey but they bring their own helmets with very much like the pro Bowl. short slam pass and reading that perfectly for the american team was number six sierra childress of the kansas city titans and making the reception, I believe, was Thompson. No, they say Denisha Montgomery made the catch. She's the tailback. There's two 24s on the team. As we said, multiple numbers. And that will be the last play of the first quarter. And the time has expired. At the end of the first quarter, the score national zero. So we end the first quarter the way we started, a scoreless tie. And I'm impressed by the defense of this game. Usually in all-star games, that gets shoved aside, and it's showtime. Not in this contest. So the defenses want to show out and uh, show fans that, hey, they can play ball too. It's not all about the offense and the, you know, the flashy type plays. And they're really showing out and showing that both sides of the ball uh, can, can step up to the, uh, to the plate. Well, we know in football, a strong defense more often than not will beat a strong offense. Case in point, Super Bowl 48. Seattle Seahawks, the league's top defense last year. The Denver Broncos, the league's top offense. And they've done studies on this. Roughly 70% of those meetings are won by the team with the strongest defense. And Seattle aided that statistical trend in a big way. Now going into that, most people do pick the offenses of the high scoring, but if especially you, when Peyton Manning's your quarterback, yeah, exactly. But if 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 you know the ins and outs of you know of, you know when it gets down to the to the trenches and you know the Warriors, they win the matches, and that's what you, you want to impose. Like I keep talking about imposing your will. That's so important in football because the other person might back up a little bit, might get a little you know scared. So. So another email coming to us from Kathy Estrada giving a shout out to the great end of her of Nicole Estrada's career. So this is her last game. Third and about seven. Running a hook and ladder of sorts or a lateral play. Breaking through almost to the end zone is number seven on the national team. I want to say that's Leah Casas. What a play call. Of the Indy Crash. No, it's Marcelina Chavez. She was listed as kick returner officially, but that's still a big play. Ball at the four yard line. First and goal. That was roughly a 35, 30 yard gain. And they've ran about two or three screens very effectively. Androzic still under center. Hand off to number 22, and she's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Kiva Thomas on the carry. There was at least two, three uh, defense linemen that blew up they play, that play. They pretty much knew what, what the play was going to be right there. Second and seven, and I figured out a way to get around this 
press box. Uh, when plays come over here, I'm just going to watch from just outside the door. Whatever works. Andrasic single back formation. Gray is to her left. Chavez to her right. Three step drop, throws right. Caught, touchdown, National Conference. Give him six, what a catch. Maria Jackson of the Cleveland Fusion with our first score of the day. Maybe that was a little uh, teammate. They, they kind of knew, you know, they're, they're teammates to each other and Maybe she knew it. Hey, I, I give her a chance to make a play. She's going to come down with it. What a throw. What a catch. Hey, this song sounds familiar. This is the Chicago Blackhawks uh, goal song. Chelsea Dagger. A little taste of Chicago. Of course, the Blackhawks. What a run they've had in the last few years. Two Stanley Cups, and they got to the Western Conference Finals this year. Lost to the eventual champion, Los Angeles Kings. The two-point conversion will not be successful. So six to nothing is our score on a play from two Cleveland teammates, Andrazic to Jackson. And a couple more emails we want to read. Donna Baxter says, shout out to Megan Glass, the best kicker Houston Power has ever seen. And don't forget, you can tweet us too at the Sports Brain, the Sports and Brain. Tony Murphy giving us a shout out as well. To Rachel Housley of the Acadiana Zydeco. That's a very unique name. Yeah, it is. Let's go by uh, Jackson. She had a very good year, over 500 yards receiving, eight touchdowns. So uh, they have connected a few times on that. Um, so that's very good. Put six on the board for them there. They, they took the lead in early in the second quarter. Maria Jackson, you're right. She was sixth in the league in receiving yards this season. 507 and eight touchdowns, as you alluded to. And Andrazic wasn't too bad herself in the air this season. 17 touchdowns, four interceptions. Not the most accurate of passers, but very efficient. As we kick off, it's a low kick. And it will go out of bounds, so... That will be a penalty on the national team and the American Conference will start at the 40. Yeah, actually, um, I had, they, they had Beth Andrazic penciled in as the starter, but she obviously didn't start the game. But yeah, she had a very good year, touchdown interception, basically, you know, four to does one. Does it really matter who starts in an all-star game? I mean, to some people it does, but overall it really doesn't. You all play basically the same amount of snaps. The Daytona Breakers from Florida wants to give a shout out to their representatives from the National Conference in this game. Daytona is more than, day than the Speedway, folks. So we'll start. No, they're going to start at the... Okay, they're going to start behind the 30. Someone must have touched it because uh, it rolled out of bounds, and normally that's a penalty. But if somebody touched it, then that penalty is moot. So it's first and 10 from the 28, going deep, but finding nobody. The intended receiver was number 14, Kelly Bohaboj of the Nebraska Stampede. Under center right now is Rachel Gore of the Seattle Majestics. Gore this season, 92.8 rating. One of five players to get over 1,000 yards. She had 1,001, 18 touchdowns, six interceptions and played in the consolation game yesterday, the Alliance Bowl. I was watching her pregame. Pre she has a very good spiral. Hand off to number eight, and she is pulled down for a loss, making the tackle number 56. Angela Embry of the Derby City Dynamite and Tahari Thomas of the Houston Power made the carry. That's going to be third. Third and 18, that was a seven yard loss, or eight yard loss. Yeah, that's the beast as they call her, as her nickname is, uh, like I, that's the, the defense is led by her. She is a, a, a man that's blowing up plays on the line of scrimmage. You, you gotta really put a hat, maybe, maybe two hats on her because she's gonna make her presence known. Fifth in the league in tackles in the regular season, 83 to be precise. Third and long for the American Conference, and it's a handoff. And Thomas is stuffed. 45 making the play. That is Veronica Rucker from the Cleveland Fusion, or could be, yes, it is Rucker. The, yep, that was the orange helmet. 
After I remind myself with these multiple numbers, Deborah Brick sending us an email. And it kind of gets confusing with the Wondering if our mic is too close. Well, we're also broadcasting this game for DVD and broadcast online, so it's not just the live stream you're seeing. We're also going to be packaging this game and submitting it to regional stations, cable stations. Hopefully we can get it online so you can watch this again. But we're going to see the punting unit come out. No, the American Conference is going to go for it, it looks like, because I see Rachel Gore lining up. No, no, okay, that, that would have been interesting. Joy Berry comes out, and we're going to have another punt. National Conference strutting their power, especially on the line. That's a low snap. Punt is away. You're not, and that's a short one. You're going to say you're not going to see too much, and nobody from the national team touched it, so the American team will down it at the 46-yard line. You're not going to see the full four special teams plays that you would normally see in the regular season, because this is a very physical game, and if you're not careful, you can get banged up pretty good. Oh, yeah, and especially on a punt like that, um, you want to yell, fire, fire, get away from that. It could have easily hit one of uh, the national players and been a turnover. So uh, that was good heads up by that, um, all them players. And we have a pronunciation clarification. It's Kelly Bohaboy from the Nebraska Stampede. I covered the Stampede a couple of times. They're in the same division as the Minnesota Machine. And as you would expect, they wear the same colors as the Nebraska Cornhuskers, red and white. First and 10 for the national team at the 46-yard line. That was a high snap, but handled cleanly and dropping the catch. No late hit called on Graves. That was Smith. In Terrell Smith, the intended receiver. And under center right now is number seven, Nicole Byer from the Dark Angels. No location listed. Uh, the Dark Angels are from Detroit. Detroit, okay. Byer on the season. 18 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 1,437 yards. She had the most completions of any quarterback in 2014. Nicole Byer of the Detroit Dark Angels. 9.40 left in the second quarter. Second and 10, player in motion. Hand off to number one. Almost slips and it's gonna be a loss of about one, making the carry. I believe it, Sabrina Kelly, yes, of the Tampa Bay Inferno. I see T and I wanna say tight end and then it's TB, not TE, so it's a tailback. Of course, when I played football games, they listed the position as running back regardless, so it's a little confusing, but we'll make sure we get that sorted out. And don't forget, you can tweet us too at the Sports Brain. We've been getting a lot of your emails as well. Right now, it's third and 12, and the national team facing some adversity on this series. Three-step drop. Screen pass to Gray is complete, but Gray is going to get past the original line of scrimmage and not much farther, a gain of about three yards. The national team will probably go for it here since they're in enemy territory, but it's going to be fourth and about seven yards. I'll tell you what, this Holly Custis, uh, number 21 from the Portland, I've been very impressed with her. She's ran a few stunts, blowing up plays. All She's all energy. You got to love her, um, her her motor, man. I, I'm very impressed with uh, watching her so far. Custis? Custis, yes. Uh, yeah, the Portland Fighting Phillies. She had 96 and a half tackles this season. That was good for third in the wo Women's Football Alliance. And we're going to get a punting play from the National Conference. A little surprising. Stacy Williams making the punt. And the catch is made, but met right away by the special teams. Receiving the punt was number eight. Tahari Thomas. But the American Conference will take over, and they have 7.59 to try to even the score. Six to nothing in favor of the national team. We've been getting a lot of emails. Lon Turner coming in. 
Shout out to all the players from my home state of Michigan on the national squad and to Kelly Bohaboy on the American team. The crowd's turning out. Uh, they keep piling in. They want to see some good hitting football. And the crowd should get pretty big tonight. As we've been slowly moving our way north throughout these games. The championship, we've had it in New Orleans. We've had it in Las Vegas. So we went out west and we went south for a while. New Orleans, Dallas. Last year was in Pittsburgh, home of the Pittsburgh Passion, one of the strongest programs in the WFA and the Chicago Force, always a team to be reckoned with. I remember in 2011, they crushed the Minnesota machine in a meeting that was held here. It was not even close. We had a flag down. And I'm not sure what is the explanation is. Did you see anything on that last play? Uh, no, I not off the top of my head. I did well, not. it's fourth. Oh, there must have been an offside call because it's fourth and three. So the national team, instead of punting here, they could convert on fourth down. There must have been an off. I think there was too many men on the. I mean, he did signal for too many men on the. Too field. many men, so too many women. Too many women. I'm <laughs> sorry, beg your pardon. Too many. It's women all right. So too many women on the field, and now instead of a punt. The national team can go for it here on fourth down. That's Grisafi under center. She gets the pass to Gray. Gray cuts left, breaks through a tackle, now rolls right, and she will get the first down. A great second effort by Jeanette Gray, the league leader in receiving yards, and that's probably why she led the league in that mark. That was a really good uh, run after the catch, kind of like Ed McCaffrey type uh of uh, receiver looks like. Uh, that was a very good play, impressive. Two Shrugged off two tackles. So a costly penalty for too many players on the American Conference and the national team converts on fourth down so they can continue their series with seven minutes and 20 seconds left. Message from Misty Rye, shout out to Nicole Estrada, Christina Stanislavski, Diana Alvarado, and Martha Rodriguez, all from the West Coast Lightning. Fresh set of nouns at the 35. What's the bubble? Get it, get it. Grisafi get it. under center, pump fakes, now passes. Passes complete to number 12. She's taken out of bounds at the 13 yard line, a gain of 22 yards, making the catch. Diasha Tali from the Columbus Comets. Columbus, the runner up four years ago in the WFA championship, losing to the Lone Star Mustangs. What a read by the... But it is coming back. back. Holding. Well, that was a great read by the quarterback, nonetheless. She guys, there was five blitz and threw the pump fake. And, but, yeah, well, at least I got a shout out in and a plug for the Columbus Comets. I'm sure they appreciate that. We need a spotter for the flags. We've missed two of them. Never really, you never really expect too many flags in uh, these games like this, but I guess well, the rest... as Ed Hockley said, yes, there are penalties in the Pro Bowl, and yes, there are penalties in the All-American game. So instead of a first down in the red zone, it's first and 25 from midfield and more flags. Do we have... It's going to be against the national team. Let's see what the ruling is. That's False start. And it's just a lack of playing together, not, not really much continuity. First and 30. And a handoff here, and that's not going to get much. Making the carry is number 24. Candy Thompson of the Tampa Bay Inferno. Gain of three on the play. It's second and 27. Go, 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 
Denise Myers giving us a shout out to D Train from the Tennessee Train, Denisha Montgomery from your sisters at home. Let's go, D! Let's go! Sending us that shout out on Twitter. Grisafi, high snap, three step drop, incomplete. Either Gray or number 81, Jackson of the Fusion, were the intended receivers. So I know this is uh, college rules, but so um, what about the hair, hair pulling? Is that is that a 15 yard or is that legal? I'm not sure. We'll find we'll out. Have to find out. Uh, I haven't seen yeah. anybody go. For we don't see hair. too many. No, we saw that in the NFL once last season, but I think it's an unwritten rule that you don't touch the hair, That's guys or girls. But if we're going in for a touchdown, I mean. Third and 27, because you can do some damage by pulling hair. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Grisafi drops back, and the pass is deflected. Number 78 on the American team, Amy Maya Mejia of the Tulsa Threat made the play. That was very good technique. You're always taught if you don't get to the quarterback, get your hands up, try to at least make a play. And and she made a very big play for them, uh, forcing a punt situation now. So a very strange series comes to an end here. A fourth and eight became fourth and three after a too many player penalty on the American Conference, then a holding and false start call on the national team turned a first and 10 in the red zone to a punt. And the American team will not return this one as it rolls out of bounds. It will be spotted at the good pump on the national team, spotted at the 14-yard line. That's a generous spot. I thought it was a few yards more, uh, but uh, good, good, generous spot by the uh, umpires. Well, who cares about you? It's a good punt, though. Inside the 20, you can't ask for much more of your punter. We have a lot of emails we'll be reading here as we get this next one. I can hardly keep up. Connie Canales, shout out to Marcelina Chavez in the Tampa Bay Inferno. T. Lowe says, shout out to the Portland Fighting Phillies, Cassie Dunsire, Nikki Dunsire, Lissy Elliott, and Holly Custis. I see you, and well, we just read you there. First and 10 for the American Conference as Gore goes back under center, and the carry, can't quite read the number. She gains a couple of yards. Let's see if we can get a number on that player. That is number 12, Taylor Hay of the Kansas City Titans. I'm impressed with all these emails. You are some very dedicated fans of the Women's Football Alliance. The Everett Rain wants to give a congratulations to their All-Americans and the Seattle Majestics, Portland Fiddlies, Tacoma Trauma, and Portland Shockwave, all in the Northwest Division of the American Conference. So. Who says there can't be some love within a divisional rivalry? Taylor Hay checks out the ball game. She might have got a little injury. Ho hope it's not too serious. Second and eight for the American Conference. Gore with split backs. Low snap. Picks it up. Gore just gets rid of it. <laughs> Nearly an interception. Oh, my. And that was close to intentional grounding. Number 24, the intended receiver, that was Rebecca Dawson of the Portland Shockwave. Nicole Gallian giving us an email. Hometown shout out to Holly Custis. Nothing better than watching that girl tackle people. I'm her number one fan. And Monica Brown as I get caught up. Shout out to my Portland Fighting Phillies, Custis Elliott and the Dunsire sisters. Custis getting love, yeah, she's a beast. She's been beasting up all game. I'm really impressed with her. Well, led the team. Led in tackles this season. Third and seven, following the incompletion. They roll right. Thompson has it. She's in trouble though. Gets to the 17 yard line. That's gonna be well short of the first down. And defense read that uh, perfectly. We had four, four, four or five people when she turned that corner. She was not going nowhere unless she went straight through them. 
Cookie Low CC says she's had her hair pulled in a game. She didn't say what the experience was, but I can imagine it's not pleasant. Three minutes, 21 seconds. Now, how much do you strategize for this All-Star game? Because the national team has plenty of time, and I think two timeouts left to get one more score at least. Yeah, well, you still want to win. Um, as a player and a coach, you want to represent yourself to the fullest. So you just got to, you know, I, I would go out and... You think we're going to see a two-minute drill? Low punt. No fair catch. So this will be returned by number 22, Terrell Smith. And Smith cutting right. She's still on her feet. Down to the 20. And she's taken down at the 18-yard line. A very risky move by not signaling a fair catch. But the American Conference had to give her some space. As you know, uh, catch interference is a penalty. And Terrell Smith, great agility on that return. I don't know if the, uh, the defense knew that she was uh, going to take that punt. Well, you can see when she took the punt, she had a seam com coming out to the right. And she hit that sideline, and she flew, man. She could fly. She got burners. Zero to 60 in a heartbeat. So the National League, well, they spot the ball at the 21-yard line, but they're going to start their next series close to the red zone. And they have plenty of time. Hand off again to, that's either Smith or Kiva Thomas. I want to say that's Thomas. And it was. And she loses a yard on the play. That was a very good uh, blow up play by number 22. I don't have a name on uh, her, do you? I don't have her on my. On the American, no. Oh, but it was good sportsmanship. She helped up the, the offensive player out there. Well, of course. I mean, this is, again, this is all for fun. Get her! Another handoff and breaking the first wave, but not the second. There's number 22 again. We can't seem to get her name, but she's making some plays for the American defense as Sabrina Kelly gets stuffed again. If anyone knows who number 22 is on the American Conference, send us a tweet or send us an email. We want to find out who she is. You know, she is, you said, blowing people up on the defensive side. Three yard loss in the play, third and 14, with one minute and 40 seconds left. Andrasic deep, and she has to roll to her left and making the sack, number 20 on the American Conference. Zan Washington of the Minnesota Machine. That's our hometown team. Ooh, ooh. I, I don't like to play three straight runs in the red zone. You gotta do something. I mean, you wanna get in there. I just don't understand the play calling the series from uh, the national side. The national team will call a timeout. They're facing fourth and 19 with 103 left. You're obviously going to go for it here. You're well outside field goal range, though. What do you do in this situation? Um, I would try to bite someone on a pump fake. Um, maybe do a little hitch and go. Maybe it could work. You, I mean, there's, you got about 30 yards to work with, so... Double move might work here. I, I'm noticing the, the corners are kind of pressing a little bit, but I don't think they'll be pressing on a fourth and, and a mile here, so. Fourth and 19 from the 25. National team has to cross the six yard line to convert. 103 left, and if they cannot convert, the clock stops to change possession, so the American team might have time for a drive. And what has been a very defensive strategical game. They do put Grisafi under center, and she's had a little more success. Going deep, looking for Gray. She's got her! Touchdown! Give him six! Twenty-five yard touchdown pass from the Chicago Force teammates. 
So, I guess when in doubt, go with the teammates. It was Cleveland hooking up for the first score, and it's Chicago hooking up for the second score. Number 22 is from Seattle on the American Conference. We'll get her name in a moment, but let's check out this two-point conversion. And it's a fake, a direct snap to the running back, but she will be short. So 54 seconds left, the national team with a 12-0 lead, and number 22 for the Seattle Majestics in this game is Case Tukatau. Case took a towel. Thank you for the... Uh... That was Cookie helping us out there. More emails coming in. I can barely keep up with you guys. Shout out to Marcelina Chavez and the Tampa Bay Inferno from Brianna Aguilar. Calvin Thompson wants to give a shout out to Candy Thompson. We are watching. I take it you are, otherwise you wouldn't send us the email. Lawn Turner, the, like the NFL, the hair is part of the uniform, so the ladies are encouraged to tuck it inside their shoulder pads. So there's your answer to that question, Andrew. And Suzanne Adams says, shout out to Camille Brimhall on the American Conference from the Utah Blitz. The American Conference will have a little bit of time here, but a botched handle on the kick and a near scare for Taylor Hay. That was close. It's good to see she checked back in the game. I know she checked out earlier with an injury. Um, glad to see she's okay. That was a double-fisted scare. And coming up at halftime, we will roll some interviews that we got from our Alliance Bowl pregame coverage and All-Star game. I keep saying that, it's the All-American game. Looks like Sowers has checked back in for the American. Well, they, they have 49 seconds to move the ball. 62 yards. But they have yet to really break into enemy territory. And they won't there. Oh, no! I thought it was going to be a pick. Everybody thought it was going to be a pick. And I think it was Kelly or Lauren Church. Those are the two players listed as number one. No, it's neither of them. Well, whoever this other number one is, she had an interception, and that's the second time we've seen an interception dropped. So instead of a pick and another chance for the National Conference to score, it's second and 10 for the American Conference. Sowers in trouble, escapes one sack, rolls to her left and dumps it off. The pass is complete though, and the clock does stop for a first down, making the reception number six. Rachel Gore, so quarterback to quarterback on that play. Getting the chains moving, call on timeout now. It looks that way. The American Conference did have two timeouts remaining. 30 seconds, 31 on the clock. So we'll roll some interviews that our friends from Perfect Storm Broadcasting got, uh, Brett Johnson and Kevin Hagstrom. They did an outstanding job getting us our pregame coverage from Chicago, and so we'll be playing that for you at halftime. Andrew and I are going to get more water before we dry up and turn into Sandmen. Got to stay hydrated, even the announcers. We need the water. And we'll hopefully have more time. Well, we should have plenty of time to read your emails. We've been getting a lot of emails from the PSB site and a few tweets. Don't forget, you can do so at the Sports Brain. And we'd love to hear what you are saying. So earlier you mentioned about the two-minute drill. Looks like we are getting a two-minute drill. We are, it's for, but it's the American Conference giving us that two-minute drill. 
no other, no other good. Um, I mean, they're all good players here, but what a quarterback to be running your two-minute drill. Uh, Sauer, she can really play. Well, the ball's at the 49-yard line, 30 seconds. I expect uh, another deep passing play here. Sowers, three-step drop, she is going deep. Pass is complete, nothing but turf ahead. See you later, touchdown, no flags. 51-yard touchdown pass to Rachel Gore, the quarterbacks. Figured it worked once, it can work twice. What a throw, she's got a laser for an arm, I love, I love her game. Sowers, the league leader in passer rating, as we said, also the most accurate this season, 67.6. Katie Sowers of the Kansas City Titans, one of the uh, Midwest Division members, along with the Nebraska Stampede, the Iowa Crush, and the Minnesota Machine. Who would have thought that two quarterbacks would be hooking up? Official timeout. timeout. Official timeout. Fiona Patterson says hi to Ashley Redshorts from London. It's uh, afternoon in London. London stand up across the pond. So we'll wait for this two point conversion most likely with 22 seconds. I was just seeing earlier in the uh, broadcast, Sowers, I seen her uh, warm up pregame that she constantly works on her throwing motion and craft and in, in it shows she throws a pretty ball. And I'm looking at the stats here. Rachel Gore nowhere near the top 20 in receiving yards. I think this must be fun for her, you know, having getting to play the receiving routes after having to pass to them for so long. Oh yeah, catching balls. Uh, you know, from anybody, of a but of course, you know, from a caliber quarterback like hers, it's pr pretty fun out there. So Joy Berry will attempt the extra point. And some token defense there. The extra point is good. 12-7 our score with 22 seconds left before halftime. I suppose you've been calling those plays and running those routes for so long, it's kind of fun to act them out is you don't get to do that in a regular season game. Yeah, and as a quarterback, you would know the most on what that, you know, your receiver, you're expecting out of him. So switching over to receiver, she probably knew that she could, you know, uh, do that route and uh, receive the ball. Um, it, it, it was in stride. It was a perfect throw. She didn't really have to slow down for it, and she just turned on the burner. And that was a huge touchdown going into halftime. If they can hold, this, uh, hold them to not scoring, that, that'd be huge for their psyche. Well, Cookie Low CC said, what a pass by Sowers. Gore used to be a defensive back, so no stranger to playing offense. So she's had to guard against it, and she's had to route it. And that gives you, a, I think personally, that gives you a huge advantage uh, knowing uh, what to expect and what to do out of that position. Um, can you say high IQ? I suppose you play defense, offense, you know it all. You know what to expect, you know how to counter it. Nothing can get in the way. So 22 seconds left. We'll see what the national team does here. As they have a couple of timeouts at their disposal. Squib kick. Bobbling it. And the national team just has to fall on it. Remember, it's college rules, so you do not have to wait for an opposing player to touch you. And I don't think we're going to see maybe a deep pass or two, but I wouldn't be surprised if they take a knee here. What a fun first half. Yeah, a lot of action, a lot of defense. Uh, and then we get a few offensive highlights. 19 seconds. Grisafi is back. She converted the fourth down play. And they're not going to take a knee. They're going to go for it. And there's a flag. The intended receiver was Marcelina Chavez, and if it's pass interference, remember it's college rules, so it would be a 15-yard penalty and not a penalty at the spot of the foul. Initially, I thought that was incidental contact, but uh, I'm not a referee. 
And pass interference is indeed the call against the American Conference. Did you know who made the hit? Did you get a number? No, I did not get a number. I was just... Well, it might be better served that she goes unnamed. <laughs> she might be a little embarrassed about that one. As we said, it's a 15-yard penalty. Again, we play college rules. We used to play NFL rules. So they don't get the ball at the spot of the foul, but they do get 15 free yards and 12 seconds left. So now you're across midfield. A lot of space to get a deep pass off. And we know Grisafi has an arm. Going deep again, and it's intercepted. Number 14, that's Jamie Fornell of the Seattle Majestics. And that will take us almost to the end of the half. Two seconds remaining. We got a penalty flag late. And the quarterback and the receiver were not on. You know, the, the receiver didn't even turn around for the ball. She didn't even know it was coming. So that just goes back to the camaraderie so the part. The pass went off a little too early. But we do have a marker. Let's find out what it is. The flag is being picked up, no penalty. Well, before we... Two seconds left. Let's look at some more emails here from Robin Sanders. Shout out to Denisha D. Train Montgomery of the Tennessee Train and the Everett Rain, telling us that Rachel Gore was a running back as well. So what position hasn't she played? Running back, defensive back, she plays quarterback. Catching, I oh mean, she's all over. The catching passes. I wonder if she was on the line at one point. Maybe they put her out there just for fun. There will be no knee here. The American Conference will go one more time. Sowers will not do anything. Making the tackle, number 33 of the national team, Angel Smith of the Chicago Force, and that brings us to halftime. 12 to seven the score. We'll pause for a few minutes on our broadcast here on Perfect Storm Broadcasting, but don't forget you can still send us your emails and tweets. Tweet me at the sports brain. Just click the email link at the PSB screen and we will catch up with your social media posts when we come back. This is the All-American Game of the Women's Football Alliance Championship Weekend. Beautiful sunny weather, not a single cloud in the sky. A little bit of haze. That should make for some good football here as we get ready to start the second half as we're still waiting for Andrew to come back the American team will kick to the national team to start the second half and with the honors not quite sure Terrell Smith and Sabrina Kelly are back to receive the kick And instead, it's going to be picked up by neither of them. It's number 30 instead who breaks through the hole and gets to the 44-yard line where the national team will start the first series of the second half. Number 30 is Alicia Okre of the Chicago Force. Want to remind you that this broadcast is being streamed live online and we will have more information on the WFA website on how you can purchase a DVD copy of this and our upcoming championship contest between San Diego and Boston. First and 10 for the national team as it's a direct snap to number 32. A little bit of a Wildcat homage, homage I should say. Number 32 on the national team is not listed. Four yard, four yard gain on the carry. Well, if anyone knows who number 32 is on the national team, please let us know. Right now I can say Tia Hopkins, congrats from your friends on the New York Sharks team through an email. Sabrina Schmidt also chiming in, saying congrats to the women of Tampa Bay representing us. Sabrina Kelly, she's an amazing player and great inspiration. 
And Marcelina Chavez, her first season has been impressive, silent but deadly. She's been anything but silent in the first quarter as Andrew Ronenson finally returns. Any longer and we would have had to send out a notice. I would have put up flyers. 32 appears to be Winthrop and she's playing another direct snap and gets back to the line of scrimmage and past midfield. It will be, well, they give her a yard and a half so it will be third and about four. I just got word that's uh, Bronson for the DC, DC Divas, number 32. Number 32, what's her name? Bronson. From the DC Divas. I don't see your name on the program. Yeah, one of the affiliates just uh, told me my ear. So that's Bronson. Well, and Martha Rodriguez Sear is watching her daughter, number 82. I love her very much and proud of her. We've got a couple more emails we'll read as we face third and about four here. There is number 22. And that is another direct snap. That is Terrell Smith on the carry, and she will pass the first down marker. Spot her at the 45. A gain of six yards. That was a very shifty move when she turned the corner. I didn't think she was going to get the first down, but she wiggled her way through it. You thought, you thought wrong, Andrew. Mom Favada gives a shout out to Lindsey Rice, D. Sherman, and all the other Columbus Comets. And Trina and Holly Martin looking good. Denisha D. Train Montgomery. Tennessee's bringing, they've got a lot of fans watching from afar. Number 32 is Bronson from the DC Divas. If we can get her first name, we will. We will mention it in the broadcast. So your fans have been quite helpful. She keeps it for herself, runs up the middle to the 39 yard line, a gain of about five yards. And a noted shift in the offensive structure of the national team. Now they're running a lot of direct snaps. We have yet to see Grisafi or Androzic take a snap. And it looks like it's it's effective right now. It's pulling defense probably off a little bit. Second and four, a six-yard gain. This time it's a handoff to Smith. She breaks the first tackle. I think there was a flag. Yes, there is. So she gets the first down for the moment pending the flag could be a face mask could be wrong face mask against the American conference so the national team will get the first down anyway sorry about that that bathroom was lined up over there they had to let the players go first so I mean I, I couldn't be rude You were an offensive lineman back in your day. You could have muscled them out of the way. Oh, that was way back in the day. First time for the Nationals. Well, 40 more pounds heavier. It's when you were in shape? Yeah. <laughs> in shape, exactly. I'm kidding. So 15 yards tacked on after the play. First and 10 from the red zone. Fake handoff. Run through the middle, and Bronson will get to the... Nah, eight yard line. Tough to tell from this vantage point, always a harsh angle. And they're gonna call it second and short. It's good coaching, they come out on the halftime with an exact plan on their mind. And they're just nope, they're gonna call it first and goal. Running it down the, down the field with the ease. First and goal from the nine. Scramble to the right for Smith. Now she cuts back to the left and gets to the five-yard line. Or I should say the two. It's tough from this viewing angle to see where the lines go, but it's a six-yard gain, second and goal from the two. Sabrina Kelly making the play there. Bronson and Kelly have been doing a lot of damage on this drive. Shotgun formation, Brunson, keeper, breaks a couple of tackles, cannot break a third. 
and she loses a yard. It will be third and goal, making the tackle for the American Conference. Number six, Sierra Childress from the Kansas City Titans. It's a very good uh, play by her. She used her hands to break the, the block and uh, stuff that play it's just short of a touchdown. She didn't want, did not want her to get in, so that was a great play. Third and goal. This is four down territory, naturally. Don't forget, you can send us tweets at the Sports Brain. The word the Sports and Brain all meshed together. The Sports Brain. In addition to the emails. And now we get our first traditional snap, and the pass will go out of bounds. The closest receiver was Jeanette Gray, and fourth and goal is facing the national team. And a couple people told me that uh, their friends could not get the, this live feed, so I don't know if that's something that's happened with some people's uh, programming in their computers, but uh, they were asking me if I knew how to figure it out, and I obviously don't know how to. Do, would you know how to figure that? The, Pablo? That's not my expertise. I talk for a living. Fourth and goal. National team doesn't have a strong kicking game, so they will go for it here. And taking the snaps is Nicole Byer of the Dark Angels. And a tackle for loss, making the play number 82. Martha Rodriguez. She comes up big again. Yeah, she snuffed that play out. She was not going to let her get in the end zone. Very good play. Get, oh, that could be a game-changing play because when you're faced up back against the wall like that inside the five, that's a come out with, you know, allowing a zero goal line points. Stand. Yes, zero points. Uh, that's a huge win. Tulsa Threat says go Amy Mejia and Erica Alford. They're representatives in this game. Well, there might be some folks uh, unable to watch the feed, but a lot of folks watching from afar. And it was a six-yard loss, so that gives the American Conference a little breathing room. And Sowers almost had that picked off. That would have been a pick six for number 30 had Alicia Oakry held on to it. Dangerous throw. Oakry read the route perfectly. That was very good um, recognition of her. She recognized the quarterback was going to go where they were going to go when she jumped right on it. Second and 10 from the nine yard line for the American Conference. Pride on the line. Hand off, read perfectly as the national team snuffs out the carrier. And making the carry was number 12. Taylor Hay. When you take the ball on offense inside the 10, you don't, I mean, it's it's disheartening not to get a first down, but you just want to maybe get a couple yards so the punt team can, you know, have a clean snap and it's not, you know. Well, they have the space for it, but again, with the punting game, not like the NFL, we don't have uh, those strong punters. Uh, again, it's one of the newer leagues and takes time to develop. If the American Conference can't get a first down, the national team will have very good field position to start the next series. Sowers lines up in the shotgun with a single back, low snap, three-step drop. Sees a lot of space up the middle, so she'll take it. And she gets to the 15. Oh, she's got the first down easily to the 25 before she's brought down by a host of national team tacklers. They will spot her at the 27-yard line. It's a gain of 18 yards. Leave it to the quarterback to get you that key third down conversion. And she can do it with the arm, as she showed in the first half, and she can do it with the leg. She's very uh, decisive in her speed. She makes a decision and she goes. She doesn't second guess herself at all. And you gotta really like that coming from the quarterback position. Well, entering this game, Katie Sowers of the Kansas City Titans was among the leaders in league rushing this season. 579 yards, 15.6 yards a carry. Showcasing her rushing abilities on that play. Fake pass and hands it off to Hay. Hay gets to the 30 yard line, or 25, we have a flag. It's a loss of two, but we have to see what the marker says. Looks like it's a penalty on the National Conference. Hey, 
15 yard face mask penalty. Face mask In college rules, we still have the five and 15 yard variants. And the American Conference gets a first down via the penalty flag. I notice in the press coverage on the right side over there. Maybe she could throw a double move over there. She could have a really big play. You talking about Sowers? Yes. Let's see what happens on a fresh set of downs. Three-step drop, passing left, looking for Gore. And this time they can't hook up. Second and ten. Gore, she's a whale of an athlete. You see in her line behind center and how she's she caught a touchdown pass in the first half. She's got speed. She's got good moves at the line of scrimmage, too. She's not going to get jammed. They're not pressing her. They, they, they backing off her. They're scared of her speed. And as we noted in the first half, Gore played multiple positions throughout her football career. Currently the quarterback for the Seattle Majestics. But she can run routes. She can read routes. And she can certainly engage in them behind the offensive line. Delayed handoff to Hay. She's brought down behind the line of scrimmage, making the tackle number 29. Darcy Leslie, the linebacker for the Chicago Force. Third and 10 for the American Conference. Initially, that looked like it was gonna be a big play. You had three, four linemen bursting through the line of scrimmage, and then you you know, you know quick draw, draw a delayed handoff to her, but uh, they had really good closing speed. The linebackers filled the gaps on that one. And checking in, I believe for the first time, is Lisa Bastian of the Minnesota Machine. Played for the team in 2010, had a great rookie season, left to join the Minnesota Valkyrie. Played there for a couple of years, and when that team disbanded, she returned to her old stomping grounds. Sowers gets the snap, is in trouble. Rolls right, now rolls left. In trouble. Tries to get something away, and good coverage by Alicia Oakry, the intended receiver, was Rebecca Dawson of the Portland Shockwave. Uh, she was looking for a flag on that play, but uh, I, I, yeah, it was just good football. Actually, that was Brandy Oakenfels. of the Tacoma Trauma. She was listed as punter originally, so I thought it was Dawson, but I can say that Joy Berry is back to kick as the American Conference will punt it away. But they did get a couple of first downs, so the national team will have deep field position to work through if they want to get a two possession lead. Chavez is back to receive the punt, and so is Terrell Smith, but that punt's not gonna be deep enough for either of them to return it, as it will roll out of bounds at the 33-yard line, so the national team will start their next series there. They had a goal line stand rebuffed by the American Conference in their last possession. I like that uh, punt, even though it's not really much. Uh, it got the bounce. Yes, and uh, the American was playing, uh, so was, uh, excuse me, the National was playing, uh, like they had nine people back there for, you know, for the return, and she did, you know, directional punt out of bounds, so she couldn't set up for a return. That was a very good punt. Tweet coming in from Denise Holden. Shout out to Marcelina Chavez. Brett and D say, great job, keep it up, and Chavez has been quite impressive for the National team today in her first season in the Women's Football Alliance. Movement on the line. False start. So that will make first and 10, first and 15. A little harder. Always sucks to have that happen on first down. Remember the national team had a first and 10 from the red zone called back due to a holding penalty and they got hit with a false start and then instead had to punt it away. Two costly penalties 
in that instance. So we'll have first and 15 instead. That's Dawson again from the Divas, and she's met with a slam from number 22 of the American Conference, Case Tukatau from the Seattle Majestics. She's continuing her strong play from the first half. She's showing out. One of the players pulling double duty this weekend, the consolation players or participants who were in the Alliance Bowl are allowed to compete in this game, but the championship players will not. Androsic under center this time. Low snap, but she fields it cleanly. Throws to her left. Low pass almost picked off by Kaylee Nutzling of the Kansas City Titans. Third and 15 facing the National Conference with four and a half to play in the third quarter. Andrew is left speechless on what the national team should do in this situation. They should, yeah. Well they I was a, just messing with you, come they on. Got, they got a boulder back there and uh, I don't know if that's Max, Max, okay, so she is going over. Oh, she's running a route. Rolling right and throws to nobody. Fourth and 15 coming up. Loosen up, Andrew, I was uh, teasing you a little there. Well, I was a little, you know, <laughs> third and 15's kind of, um, you know, Even uh, you're help, stumped. Yeah, help me down here. Like, I don't know. I'm not the offensive coordinator. I haven't really seen any. Uh, Who do I look like? Norv Turner? <laughs> I haven't really seen any like uh, sharp counts or silent counts or trying to get the defense to, to jump offside. I haven't seen one offside call yet. National team will punt it. Stacy Williams. Stacy Williams from the West Michigan Mayhem. We haven't seen too many punts from the national team yet, so we'll get to see a look at the special teams for the American Conference. Back to receive it. Appears to be Nutzling, and can't quite read the number. Number 13, Ree Graves, who's a linebacker for the Titans. Punt will not be returned and it will bounce out at the 40 yard line. The Americans will take over first and 10 on their own 40 yard line. So three and out by the American Conference and they will get decent field position as they seem to be winning that battle so far in the second half. Yeah, they start off with pretty good field position here. See if they could put a uh anything together drive well they they did put a decent drive together last time you know backed up in their own 10 yard line but uh maybe they could put some more that saw was back out here shaking up with her running back let's probably saying let's get this <laughs> sours under center gore one of the receivers and she's lining up behind the tight end number 19. that's jackie mccall one of her teammates for the majestics but Sowers in trouble. Down she goes. Making first contact was number 52. I want to say that was Sheldon Bins. That is Sheldon Bins who made the initial play for the Derby City Dynamite. She blew up that, she blew up that play. Uh, and the defense is really making an impact on both sides of the field. I, I just can't emphasize the line of scrimmage enough because that's where the game is really won at the end of the day is um, on both sides of the, the ball is the line of scrimmage. Nine yard loss on the sack. Second and 19. This time Sowers in a shotgun. Low snap picked up by number eight. And she's brought down for another loss. No protection at all. And there on the play, one of the two players, Angel Smith from the Chicago Force. As Tahari Thomas got stuffed again. And a pronunciation clarification, number one, is Kaylee Knightsling. That's how you pronounce it, Knightsling for the Kansas City Titans. Knights. I like that name. Sounds like a Transformers nickname. 
Five yard loss and third and 24 facing the American Conference. This sounds like a football player, a night swing. It's ferocious, I love that. Sowers again lining up deep. Dual backs this time. Thomas to her right, to her left. Well, we'll get that name in a moment, but she's in trouble again. It's number 17 with the pressure and Sowers stays in bounds and escapes the tackles. Now has plenty of room to run to the right side, stays behind the line of scrimmage and the pass is complete. Short of the first down, but Lisa King with a huge reception to accentuate the great escape by Kelly or Katie Sowers. Yeah, that was a great catch. But we have a flag on the play. It's against the American Conference, so. Will they accept or decline? I'm guessing they'll accept the penalty because otherwise you're looking at fourth and short. Ineligible player downfield. Ineligible player downfield. One of the offensive linemen must have crept too far up. Now that, that, that'll that often happen when you think your quarterback's gonna take off with the ball and then she somehow manages to sneak out of it and, and throw it. That, that You'll see that a lot, um, unfortunately. So a loss of, or no, not a loss of down. It will stay third down, but instead of fourth and short, it's third. No, they do call it fourth. So a loss of down and the American Conference has to punt it away. So the great escape by Katie Sowers, negated by an ineligible player downfield. Low kick. And it takes an American bounce and it bounces right over to number six, Sierra Childress, but she can't participate in that play. National team will start from the 42 yard line. 25 seconds left in the third quarter in our All-American game, part of the Women's Football Alliance Championship weekend. I'm Mike Pete and he's Andrew Roninson. Our web team, Brett Johnson and Kevin Hagstrom, helping out on Perfect Storm Broadcasting and they will have some Legion baseball for those of you who will want to follow along or those of you who might be tuning in from the Twin Cities area. That will take place on Monday. And uh, there will be plenty of Football coming your way on Perfect Storm Broadcasting. High school football is coming up soon. But back to action here. It's Grisafi who takes the snap this time for the national team. Finds Thompson. And Thompson gets back to the line of scrimmage and pushes the pile forward for a two-yard gain. Number 24, Candy Thompson, the fullback from the Tampa Bay Inferno. You know, on a play like that, you're just hoping to bust something, you know, maybe someone um, um, overruns the play or misses their assignment. It's just basically like a little handoff, but uh, sometimes they, they go for really big plays. And that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. The National Conference leads 12 to seven, no scores in the third period. One more time, you can send us your emails by clicking on the email link at the bottom of the PSB screen, and you can also send us a tweet I'm the Sports Brain. We've had a few folks chime in today, and we will return at 5 p.m. for the championship between the San Diego Surge and Boston Militia. And Andrew, we had a chance to research the matchup last night. Boston, normally a balanced team, using a run-heavy game to get through the postseason, and San Diego, also a balance of passing and rushing and in the regular season, they scored 99 points against the Arizona Assassins. Yeah, I, I, I ain't never seen that in any type of uh, football game. 99 points, almost triple digits. And they've been doing work in the playoffs. They've gotten 30, what is it, 32 rushing touchdowns in three games? Yeah, 32 rushing touchdowns in three games. And San Diego marched through the playoffs relatively unscathed. It's a rematch of three years ago. Boston won the championship that year. San Diego won the following year. So a meeting of recent champions awaits us tonight. Well, I guess the Surge can say something that the Chargers can't. 
<laughs> Second and 10 for Grisafi as we start the fourth quarter. High arcing pass is caught by number seven. Tackled from behind by number 36 of the American team. Marcelina Chavez with a big gain. As they spot the ball at the 16 yard line. 28 yard gain on the passing play. That was a great throw. Uh, I thought maybe the defense could have made a uh, play on that ball, but she just snuck it in right there and run after the catch is huge on that play. Francesca Stable, the strong safety for the Austin Outlaws made the tackle. The touchdown saving tackle, but it's first and 10 from the red zone for the National Conference. They've been in this area once. And we're denied by a goal line stand from the American Conference. Let's see if they can punch their way through this time. As Grisafi lines up, single back formation. Screenplay to Chavez, read perfectly by the American Conference. No gain on the play. Jamie Fornell from the Seattle Majestics making the stop. Yeah, she read that play perfectly. 50 tackles on the year. She had four interceptions and one touchdown return. Loss of one on the play. Second and 11. Hand off to number 29. She punches through the hole to get a few yards back. And she'll be stopped at about the 11 yard line. Number 29 of the National Conference. That's uh, not Darcy Leslie. We've seen her already. But she does not have a name. So if we can get an identification on the other 29, that would be appreciated. But more importantly, it's a five yard gain and third and five coming up for the national team. They can convert without scoring. Single back again, it's Chavez lining up in that slot. And four receivers. No, Chavez actually is the deep player. There's another seven on the national team. And that's Leah Casas, the tailback. And the national team gonna call a timeout. Timeout nationally. Might have been trying to draw the American Conference offside or they weren't sure what play to execute. I wanna go back to Jamie Forno. Excuse me, she had two interception return touchdowns and one fumble recovery touchdown. So three total touchdowns out of a back, uh, out of back seven, that's pretty good. Two left, three left. Special thanks to both coaches today. Uh, what's your impression of the Women's Football Alliance and this gathering of all-stars? Well, I thought it was going to be an offensive uh, heyday, but it's a bit more uh, competitive than, than I would have expected coming in for an um, all-star game. Which is, I really like it. I, I love this defensive play. It's, it's exciting as a, as a broadcaster and as a fan. we got a lot of fans out here rooting on their players. I'm sure they enjoy it. I'm sure they enjoy it a lot. It's not too surprising, though, because... It, well, yes, the offense gets all the glory. Remember, this is an all-star game, so we're featuring some of the league's top defensive players, as we've seen already. Custis and Martha Rodriguez. Angie Embry. This is a strong group of women. Third and five. Grisafi under pressure. Almost intercepted, but a flag that could be a hold. The intended receiver was number 22 on the national team. I think uh, the defender got her early. Pass interference, yeah. could be pass interference. Thomas or Smith, it's likely, it is gonna be against the American Conference, so it should be a first down for the national team as they hold a 12-7 lead. Yes. Pass interference against he won. And actually, that was Gina Holcomb. In uh, perspective, that was the right play for her to make because she was beat. Uh, that was looking like it could have been a, a touchdown, so she saved a touchdown for that play. But it does result in the first down. All right, that and that does allow the national team to convert on third down. Now they get first and goal from the eight. A fresh set of downs to work with.
Dropping back, the throw. And it was a jump ball, making the deflection. Forno was on the play as Nicole Byer goes back under center from the Detroit Dark Angels for the national team. Well, Byer seems to be the quarterback in these red zone situations. That was a very good read by uh, Forno. She was she basically backed her like a center fielder would be um, to read that to, to read the quarterback and to make the right play. And she comes up with a big pass deflection. Now Beth Androzic goes out to execute a play. Second and goal. Single back. Two step drop. Underthrown. The intended receiver. Intended for number 22, Terrell Smith. Terrell Smith. And she had her. She had a window open right there. And that was a give me six right there. And she just underthrown it. Put a little more mustard on it. She would have had her. Third and goal. And you have to want think the American team recalling their goal line stand in the third quarter and they're in position to get another goal line stop and keep this a one possession game. Yeah, that's huge. They're they're showing their they're playing the right way on D. Single back formation again. Kelly in the backfield. It's Grisafi who takes the snap. Three-step drop, screen pass to number one. And number one is not a lonely number in this instance. It's a eight-yard touchdown pass to Sabrina Kelly. She turned on the Jets. You can see there was three defenders coming towards her, but they just didn't have enough uh, speed to catch her. That was... <laughs> Plenty of space on the left side. So the second touchdown pass of the game for Semi Grisafi, she connected earlier in the second quarter with one of her Chicago Force teammates. That led to a score in the second quarter. And that was Jeanette Gray. So Bayer goes under center as the national team attempts another two point conversion. They failed in their first two tries and they fail in their third try. But more importantly, they make this a two possession game, 18 to seven, 11.04 left in regulation. Sabrina Kelly of the Tampa Bay Inferno scoring on the touchdown. Listed as a tailback. You gotta love, you just a little simple throw, give your uh, player uh, a chance to make a move in space and, and get some points. And she didn't rank among the top members in the rushing or receiving leaderboard, but you're here for a reason when you get the all-star assignment. And Kelly has proven her worth today. Miss Kia says, yes, these women are here because they are strong players. And I can attest to that myself. I covered the Minnesota Machine for a couple of seasons when they won the Midwest Division back-to-back -back years. Yeah, Kelly did have eight touchdowns on the year, so she, she can make a couple plays here. Now. Kickoff. It's going to go to one of the receivers. That's Lisa Bastian getting her first action, and she's wrapped up at the 25-yard line, making the open field tackle and getting a hug from a fellow national team member was number 30, Alicia Okreen. She's been highly involved on defense today. Yeah, she's been all over the field, showing out for her city. This is her, you know, home, home city. Um, probably wants to play on a good show. Probably got a lot of fans here uh, and supporters, family in attendance, so you gotta love that when, when that happens. I count eight players all together from the Chicago Force representing the national team, and it's not very hard for them to make the trip. This is their home field. And you gotta love that, playing an all-star, you know, all-star game in your home city. It doesn't get really much, it would've got better if they would've went to the championship, but this is right, probably right there. Well, Glenn Perkins and Kurt Suzuki got to um, make the final out at the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. And, uh, of course, the WNBA All-Star Game was a homecoming for Brittany Griner and Diana Taurasi and Candace Dupree of the Phoenix Mercury. But it was Shoni Schimmel who stole the show. Rachel Gore taking the quarterback slot again. 
Let's see what she does. Sowers has lined out wide. And they're gonna cook up in reverse, and the pass oh! was caught! Katie Sowers with the deflection. Keeping the ball alive as long as it doesn't touch the ground. It's a live ball. Elena Katsis on the coverage. But something happened with Sowers as she went down. She may have cramped or strained a muscle. Sowers pulling off an acrobatic move to complete the reception at midfield. A 24-yard gain officially, but some concern right now. Katie Sowers of the Kansas City Titans getting off gingerly. Sowers, as we've noted before, the leading quarterback in passer rating, 133.6, and one of the league's top receivers, or rushers as well. As soon as she made that catch, she it motioned over for help. Um, that I hope it's not too serious. She's a very good player. You just hope it's maybe a cramp or a strain and that she can get back out there. It was Gore to Sowers on that play, and now the two quarterbacks who've been hooking up on these passing routes are no longer available. Well, Rachel Gore still is, but Sowers is not. And the American Conference will take a timeout, likely to evaluate Sowers as she is speaking with number 21, Holly Custis of the Portland Fighting Phillies. 9-10 remaining. This is a two possession game. The American Conference would have to score and then get a stop and burning one of their timeouts may not help them if they need to use it later. Yeah, this is a very important possession. If they want to stay in this game, they're going to have to put some points on the board because the time, the clock is their enemy now. Uh, that's their biggest enemy is the clock. She is asking me, when was the last time the American League won? I cannot tell you because this is the first time I've covered this game. I would not know off the top of my head. Emails have been trickling in the second half. We wanted to let you know you can still send them your way or our way just by clicking on the email link and they will be forwarded to us here at the broadcast booth if you want to get your shout outs or other news and notes in. We've had great response today, great feedback from the fellow compatriots of the Women's Football Alliance and fans who are watching. It adds something to the broadcast when the fans can engage in the interaction. Sowers, stationary in the pass was underthrown. Katsis with the deflection, the intended receiver was Boho, uh, not Boho Boy, it was Jamie Fornell, I believe. Yeah. Yes, it was. And I think Gore knew she missed that one. Uh, the receiver had her player beat at the line of scrimmage. Very good release. And she just underthrew that just a little bit. That could have been a huge, huge play for them. She's just got to throw that play out and look for the next play. Don't don't look back on that play. Um, and, you know, it's a one-play league in this. You just got to keep going for it. You can't look back. Second and 10 for the American Conference at the 49. Gore in trouble, gets rid of it, and that was easy pickings for Alicia Oakry. She's my defensive MVP, I would say that much. Interception and the national team. If they can get a good drive here, can come away victorious. Yeah, it was just another kind of unthrown ball. Can come out with a spiral that you would like to and it results in a turnover cost of turnover. Deborah Brick says a shout out to Jamie Fornell from the Majestics and to the ball girl Cassie Brick who has hung up her cleats. She was MVP two years ago when the San Diego Surge won the national championship scored four touchdowns in that game and she may not be playing we have a flag on the play could be delay of game or well, we've seen too many men a couple of times women too many women It's an illegal substitution on the American Conference, so it was neither of those. I should say it, was no too, it wasn't too many women. Let's see if they were, they've been rushing five the past two series. Let's see if they keep it up. 
Byer under center, in trouble. Breaks two tackles and completes the pass to KT. And she is met at the 40 yard line, but that will be close to a first down. It was first and five. And now it's gonna be first and one. No, they're gonna give her the spot. That was generous of them. It was a generous spot, but again, this is an all-star game. I don't think you're gonna be feuding too much with the officials. First and 10 for the Nationals at the 40 yard line. Fresh set of downs at the 40 yard line for the national team and they are looking to really evaporate clock. One more score would confirm victory for this group, but even if they can run out clock and end the American team's chances at victory, they would take that. Yeah, just play good situational football. Use the clock as your, your best friend here. Um, and that should be right. You never know something, you know, botch snap could result in a, uh, a touchdown or a turnover. You never know in these games uh, because everybody hasn't really played with each other. Everyone, you know, they don't have that, you know, camaraderie. So anything can happen in, in uh, these games. And that's a good point. And some of these players, as we have a timeout, some of these players participated last night. So you have to wonder about their endurance. And as you pointed out, they had a scrimmage together, had some time to run through some drills, but... When you have these all-star games, you don't get too many opportunities to play with each other. And that's the case for every league. You get one, maybe two practices at most. And as a result, you don't have the same instinct or the same anticipation you would if you were playing with your fellow teammates. Yeah, it's, it's been all shotguns, so no, anything could you know go wrong. We haven't seen too many close snaps. You're right, it's been all shotgun. Meyer, quick throw, completes to Kaiti, and she'll have the first down and more as she gets to the 45-yard line. Actually, it was Terrell Smith on the catch for the Tampa Bay Inferno. And a 15-yard gain. That was a big catch, and it was more like she gave the... I like how she finished that run. Uh, the tackles tackled. It was more like she tackled the tacklers. Two of them flew back uh, at the point of impact. Uh, it was a really good way to finish off the run. Yeah, run after the catch, I should say. Yak, yards after catch. It's all about the yak, if you're a receiver. It is all about the yak. A yakety yak. That's what the national team is hoping to communicate to the American Conference. Fire, three-step drop. Going deep. And is that inbound? The official signals yes, so give the reception to Maria Jackson at the 26-yard line, a 19-yard gain, and another first down. Yeah, they figured out, you know, they're rushing five just about every play, so if they can get a few seconds and the receivers can get up the sideline, they'll have a chance to make the catch. And they have top-line protection from the offensive line. Remember, it's an all-star assortment there, too. We don't mention their names often, but... Most important players, the linemen. I would agree. No protection this time. Bayer has to get rid of it and find Smith up the middle. Smith will be brought down at the 15-yard line, and she might get a few more after a penalty flag was thrown. D. Smithingle, I believe, made the stop, but we have to check the marker. Oh, no, they're calling now. In Illegal. The player downfield. Well, that was funny. You've seen all five linemen nearly just sprint down the field because they knew it was going to be a, a screen play, uh, basically. But. So would you charge the penalty to the entire offensive line? Uh, yeah, you could, you could say that. They all jumped the gun probably a little bit. Well, the penalties don't multiply that way, but it, instead of first and 10, it's first and 15 from the 31. But the national team... Still doing, still completing their objective on this possession. Evaporating time and moving the ball through the field. Fire in the shotgun. Has more protection this time. 
Pass deflected and caught by one of the linemen. That is legal, and she'll be tackled from behind by number 55 on the American team. I want to say that's Jeanette Jimenez of the Central Cal War Angels. That's one instance where the offensive play or the offensive line can participate on a passing play. Yeah, and as a lineman, you got to love that, getting the ball running. Not the way they planned, but it works for a four-yard gain. And, it's, and time off the clock, which is very important. Well, they would have, yes, it's a complete pass. So it's third and 11. Breaking through tackles is Sabrina Kelly, and she runs to the 25-yard line. And that's going to, the, the line judge says fourth down, the scoreboard says third down. And so the uh, chain gang says fourth down, and that's what we're going with. So it's fourth and 11 for the national team. You're too deep to punt it at the 20, it looks like the 24-yard line. Another first down gives you the win effectively here with three and a half minutes to play. Yeah, that's a big down for the D right here. Make or break uh, the game for them. They need to come up with a stop. So this effectively is the game. If the national team can convert on first down, they can run out the clock. If they can't, the American team takes over, and they still have the slimmest of chances. Grisafi going for the dagger, looking for Gray, and it's picked off. The interception by number six. She'll be stopped at the five-yard line. Sierra Childress of the Kansas City Titans with a huge interception, and the American Conference still has life. As big as that play was, it might have been better to just deflect the ball down. I mean, that's well, about 15 to they, 20 yards. and Right, they were looking for Jeanette Gray, but as a cornerback, as a safety, if you're in the secondary, you, what are you taught to do? Catch the ball, because if you deflect it, you never know, a lucky bounce and it goes for a touchdown. You're right, it hurts field position, but at least you know you made the p play and you save a little time as well. I mean, the clock would have stopped for a change of possession anyway, but instead of getting it a turnover on downs, you get it off a pick. Psychologically, maybe you're feeling a little yeah. more intense. I get what you were saying, though. I mean, if you, it's a situation where if you have to drop a pass, that would be the time to do it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Childress gets a little air time. And she showed both. She danced after that, so that's Well, that's, and I think it adds her. some momentum because it's an exciting... It's always an exciting opportunity when you can personally rob a touchdown. But now that the American Conference has work to do, and that's not going to get it done. No gain on the play from first and ten at the seven-yard line. I don't understand that play one bit. You got to throw. You, you, you got to be score. aggressive. There's no sense playing conservatively here. You got to go for it. I mean, 2.15 left and no two-minute warning to rely on. I don't see much urgency, though, out of the American Conference. No, not at all. They just... And again, this is an exhibition game, so... We'll see what happens. Gore fakes the handoff, throws from deep, and that's deflected the intended receiver Number 23, Erica Moy from the Minnesota Machine. She did have a player open in the middle of the field, of, but she probably, you know, it's hard to see her with all those players. But yeah, she had a player wide open in the middle of the field. Would have been for a big play. Uh, Lisa King from the War Angels. Was As we wind down in this All-American game, a beautiful showcase of defense. Gore looking right, rolls right, directs King to catch it, and the ball dropped. Ball hit the ground before it went into King's hands, so it's incomplete fourth and 10 here, and the American Conference has to convert for any chance at victory.
if they decide to. And no, they send out the punting unit instead. Unless they plan a fake, this should conceal the victory for the National Conference in this All-American game. If we set a... They do have Gore lined up. But there will be no fake. There's the punt. And the National Conference will emerge victorious in this All-American game. And what overall was a strong exhibition of defense. That yeah, was really good showing by both sides of the defensive ball. Um, you expect a little more offense, but overall, I think, you know, nobody came out with a really significant injury, is from what I can tell, and that's always good if, if you go through the whole game without a really big right. injury. Katie Sowers uh, took a hard hit at the end, and her departure may have affected the American team's chances because it was Sowers and Gore who really hooked up together, and when you take one of those, you take one part of that equation away, uh, you don't get an equal result. Yeah, they're, they're two really big playmakers. The, the quarterbacks uh, from both teams were just, they had looked like they were in sync. 105 left. We're not going to get a victory formation. It's an all-star game. Andrazic going for one more. She's got it. Touchdown. 25-yard touchdown pass. Give the credit to Leah Kazis, the tailback. And one more touchdown for the national team, thanks to Andrazic. And that was a bullet. I did not expect, I thought, you know, we're going to get handed off and just call it a day, but hey, there, this is an all star game. They want to put on a show and score as many points as they can, and you got to respect it. Leah Kaza, so she gets the exclamation point in two games. She, she and her Indy Crash team got the victory last night in the Alliance Bowl. And now she scored a celebratory touchdown at the All-American game. And Kazas actually was among the leaders in passer rating. Beth Andrazic came close to 1,000 yards passing for the season. For the Cleveland Fusion. Well, if the American Conference can take one item as a consolation is that they stop the National Conference on all of their two-point conversions. 33 seconds left, but that's academic. The National Conference up 24 to 6. And the American Conference will have to wait another year. So we've had a chance to dissect the championship matchup before we wrap things up for the afternoon. I want to get your pick, Andrew, on who wins tonight's game. Well, just uh, I heard a little birdie uh, say Boston is going to overpower and just manhandle the San Diego Surge. This is, uh, this is not what I've said. This is what you I've heard a little birdie chirp in my way. ear. And uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Boston. I'm going to go with Boston. What do, you, what do you think? You're Boston strong, huh? Well, I mean, for this game, I am, yes. Because it's there city <laughs> there is another word i cannot include in this broadcast so you're going with boston because it's their Man. city city <laughs> we'll let you figure out what that word is here's number 19 on the american conference looking to get a good return here and she's tackled at the 37 yard line that was jackie mccall of the seattle majestics is that david ortiz that said that it was David Ortiz right after the Boston Marathon attack after that was resolved. And Boston's first game back for the Red Sox following the capture of the perpetrators. And it became a rallying cry for the city of Boston. Red Sox won the World Series that year. And Militia, and like I said, they have shown their physicality in the playoffs. They have, you know, 32 rushing touchdowns. And three games, so they're really showing their dominance on the, the line of scrimmage. 
We'll remind you one more time, you can watch that game at 5 p.m. We'll have a live broadcast right here on PSB. So you know, take a break for lunch. Come back with us at 5 p.m. Central Time. That's 3 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Mountain, 6 p.m. Eastern. Time for our last set of plays. And one more interception for my defensive MVP, Alicia Oakry of the Chicago Force. As she brings the ball to the 30-yard line. Oakry has impressed me today. Yeah, she uh, she's showing her, her stuff and showing why she is in this game. Very good game for her. If she wasn't making interceptions, it was her coverage, and they're just going to call the game, even though there was 11 seconds left on the clock. The outcome was decided, so no need to run one more play. The national team wins 24 to 7. I shorted the Americans a point earlier. It was 7, not 6. But defense winning the day for the national team and some fancy playmaking from the quarterback tandem of Sammy Grisafi and Beth Andrazic. Yeah, they, they really showed on Andrazic uh, showing her stuff. She's got a really good arm, really good decision making. Um, you know, well-deserved uh, win for them. Well, congratulations to all our All-Stars competing in the All-American game. And we want to thank you fans one more time for chiming in. We love the engagements because that's what makes these leagues and this product such an experience. It's not just playing, it's hearing from all of you people who contribute to our broadcast and to the league's mission. Final score, national team 24, American team seven. In the All-American game, our 2014 championship event concludes tonight at 5 p.m. Central Time. The San Diego Surge champions two years ago against the Boston Militia champions from three years ago and a rematch of the 2011 championship. That will do it from here at Lane Tech Stadium. So for Andrew Oninson and our entire crew, I'm Mike Peden. Thank you for watching the 2014 All-American Game. We'll see you at 5 p.m.